this lesson we will learn how to count significant digits. So now that we've measured things, we know that sometimes when we measure things we have uh, estimated numbers and we have measured numbers and we also have placeholders, things that weren't really measured. Things that are not measured or estimated, placeholders are not considered to be cons uh, significant digits. So we need to know how to count significant digits. Now, little disclaimer here, you'll often hear me refer to sig figs. The reason for that is sometimes we call them significant figures uh, because sig fig rhymes and it's cool and awesome. So a lot of chemistry teachers call them sig figs even though it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so bear with us. So we have to remember as we did last time that when we write a number the way it is written tells information about how precisely it is measured. Me written. Measured. A little mistake there. I'd go back and fix it, but you know, I'm kind of ghetto. So, what do I mean by that? Well, let's look over here. They give information about how well a value was measured. So, what does that mean? Well, here we have several numbers. We have 4.00, we have 4.0000, and we have 4, and we have 40,000. That's a comma there, those of you in the United States. So we have 4.00. This one, if we assume that the person who measured this used correct rules, then the 4 is a measured value. They had an instrument that measured out to the tenths place, and then they estimated that it was exactly on the tenths, and estimated this zero as well. So this has uh, three digits, all of which were either measured in the four and the zero or the estimated one. Here we have one, two, three, four digits that were measured, and this last one was estimated. How do we know that? Well, they wrote them. If they did not have an instrument that could measure out this far, they would not have written all of this. Now in this case, we have a four, just four. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means the four... Well, we have to estimate one digit. The only digit written is 4, which tells us that this 4 was estimated. This was a very crude measuring device. This might have been something that only had, like, one mark from 0 to 10, and we saw that it was just, like, a little less than halfway, and we guessed that it was about 4. So I'm guessing that this instrument cost a heck of a lot more than this one. And here we have 40,000. 40,000 uh, is, um, well you might ask, well, how many sig figs is that? Well, you might say that it looks like it's measured very precisely, but you don't really know that because uh, you can't really get rid of any of these zeros. If you get rid of this zero, for instance, right here, you're left with 4,000. It's not 4,000, it's 40,000. So there's an ambiguity here about how well this is measured, and sig figs are going to help us understand that. So how do you count significant digits? Well, I'll read this off. You can copy it down. If you're at home, I'd just pause it and write it all out and then start it up again. But uh, step one, draw a box around all non-zero digits. If there's an underlined zero, treat it like a non-zero. So do draw your box around underlined zeros. Step two, you ask, does your number contain a dot? And uh, by dot, we mean decimal point. If it does not, then you're done. Everything in the box is significant. There's nothing else to do. You just count the numbers in your box. However, if there is a dot written out in your number, then there's one more step. Step three, extend your box all the way to the right. Everything inside the box is significant. Now, I don't expect any of that to make any sense, so let's work through some examples. You can always refer back to your rules here as we go through them. So let's just apply our rules here. We said to put a box, we have, uh, we have eight different numbers here. We're going to do them all. We're going to put a box around our non-zero numbers. We're going to start with this guy right here, 582,000. Well, all the non-zeros are just right here. Then I look for any written out decimal places. There isn't one. There's one implied here, but it's not actually written, so we don't count it, and so we're done. This has the 5, the 8, and the 2 are significant, so this has three significant digits. If we look at the one to the right there, now, if we start out by putting our box around all non-zeros, we have the 2, then we ask her in itself, does it contain a dot? Well, it does. It contains a dot. The number contains a dot, so we extend our box all the way to the 
right, oh, guess what? It's already extended all the way to the right, so there's nothing else to do. Everything inside of the box is significant. That 2 is significant. There's only one significant digit there. Next, the 605. 605. You can only make one box, so you have to include that 0 in the middle. You, it's got to contain all of the non-zeros, and that box does. Uh, now, it doesn't really matter if we have a dot or not, because we've enclosed the entire number, so there's nothing else to do. This has three significant digits. Uh, this guy here, same thing. To include the 1 and the 5, we have to include the whole number, so we know that all of those digits are significant. There are six significant digits in there, the one, two, one, zero, 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 five. They're all significant. Uh, now we get to one that's a little bit more interesting. If we go to the 450.000, we enclose just the four and the five, and then we look for the dot. Yes, there is a dot. So we do extend our box all the way to the right this time, and so we do include all of those zeros. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six significant digits there. These are pretty easy once you get used to them. Just counting them is pretty easy. It's actually the rounding you're going to have some trouble. So we'll do that in a second. 25,000, we include the 2 and the 5. We look for a dot. There's no dot, so we're done. Two significant digits. Here we have the 555. Five, five. Be careful, though, because I see an underlined 0. That's significant. we got to count it, so we have to put it all the way around both the 5 and the 0. And then we look for a dot. There's no dot, so we are done. Everything in there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven significant digits. For our last example, we have point zero zero three zero 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 or whatever, and so we go ahead and we enclose just the three, because that's our only significant digit, but we see that there is a dot. So that means we need to extend our box all the way to the right, so all of those zeros are encountered as well, so there are five significant digits here. So these zeros are significant, we're measured or estimated, these are placeholders, so we don't count them. doesn't mean they aren't there, that we don't write them, it just means that we don't count them as significant digits. So what do I mean by rounding? Well, let's take the same group of numbers, and now let's round them. Let's round them so that <coughs> we have uh, two significant digits. We're just basically going to rewrite these numbers and have exactly two significant digits in each one of them. So how would we do that? Well, let's just follow the round rules of rounding. The way that you round things is you're going to keep the leftmost digits first, and then you can count to the right until you have the correct number of significant digits, the number you want. Now we'll get into the next lesson about how we determine how many we want, but for now we're just going to assume that we always want two and see how to do that. So we're going to keep the leftmost digit, count to the right until you have the correct number of them. Any digit that you don't need, once you get to the right, you've already got all your significant digits and you get some unnecessary ones, you're going to round them off. You're going to round them off uh, anything that you don't need. Now be careful, remember how to round. When you're to the right of the decimal place, rounding off those digits makes them go away you just round them off. And any number 5 or greater you would round up, of course. And digits to the left of the decimal don't just go away, they turn into zeros. So let's go back and do some of this. So 582,000, I want to write that with two significant digits. I had three. If I go back th through here, here's how many. I'll write over in blue how many I have originally. And then we will change it to 2. So on uh, the first one we have three significant digits currently, so we want to change it to 2. So we are going to round off things. So we start on the left, 5 we're going to keep, 8 we're going to keep, and now we have two significant digits. We don't want any more significant digits. So everything else is going to be rounded off. So that 2 becomes a 0 because it's to the left of the decimal, and all these other zeros just remain zeros. That is how you would round that to two significant digits. 582,000 rounded to two significant digits is 580,000. 605, we're going to keep the 6, we're going to keep the 0, and the 5 is going to get rounded off. But 5 is 5 or bigger, so we're going to round up, which means that the 0 turns into a 1, and that 5 which gets rounded off. So basically think of it this way, an 05 
turns into a 10 when you round it. So 610, that's two significant digits like we wanted. This guy down here, number six, we're going to keep the four, we're going to keep the five, and then we're, we've got all the significant digits we want. Here's a zero that, uh, it's to the left of the decimal, so we're going to keep it. And then these zeros to the right of the decimal, if we write them out, if we follow the rules of sig figs, we'll have six again. We don't want six, we want two. In other words, we don't want any of those. In fact, we don't want this zero here to be significant. So we'll, what we do is we just stop these zeros to the right of the decimal point. We just get rid of them. And so 450, that, if we apply the box and dot method to that, you'll see that it has two sig figs. Next, we have our 555 million numbers. So we're going to keep the 5, and we're going to keep the next 5, and now we have two sig figs, so this next third 5 needs to go away. But again, it's 5 or bigger, so we're going to round that last 5 up. So this 5 turns into a 0, sort of blending my colors here. Let's 5, 6, 0, and then this 0, this 0, this 0, 0, 0, 0. It's kind of messy, I know. So in essence, 555 million with this zero underlined turns into just 560 million with none of the zeros underlined whenever you have two significant digits. Over here, uh, this is a case where we actually have one significant digit and we want two. So how do we do that? Well, you can't make up numbers. The only thing that you can add are, uh, if you need to, make more significant digits, the only thing you can add is zero. So you can't change the number, so we're going to basically keep that. That's not significant anyway. Keep it. Not significant, not significant, not significant, not significant, not significant. We really haven't changed anything yet. And there's our two, so we still have one significant digit. But it turns out if you put a zero over here, that is now, that zero is significant according to the box and dot method. Remember, everything extended to the right gets counted if you did your box and dot that two and the zero. Uh, because of the presence of this decimal point would both count there. So that is how you would write that. You would, uh, when you need to add sig figs uh, on a decimal number like that, you usually just add zeros to the right. Here we have 100, so we're going to keep the 1, we're going to keep the 0, we're going to keep the, well, we're going to round off the second 0, but notice that when you round off the second 0 and you keep the first 0, you can't really tell the difference. How do you know which one of them is significant? Well, the way we have it written right now, these zeros to the right of the decimal and the 5, by the way, those all just go away. So we're down to that, but that is one sig fig. If we apply the box dot method to that, it'll be one significant digit. So here we have a case where we need to make a 0 significant that isn't according to the box and dot method, and the way we do that is we just underline it. If you have a 0 to the left of the decimal point, then you can do that. You could not put, you did not put a 0 uh, to the right of the decimal point underlined. Uh, you can't do that on the right, but on the left you can. So 100 with the first zero underlined is how you would write that with two significant digits. Um, this guy here already has two significant digits, so that's pretty easy. And the very last one here is very similar to this example here. We have one sig fig, but uh, we have five, actually. Actually, it's, it is not the same, I guess. It's very different. Here we had five sig figs and we wanted to keep uh, two, so remember these are not si these left ones are not significant, so we can just rewrite them. We haven't changed anything, and that three is the first significant digit, that zero is the second significant digit, and we're done, so we're not going to write anything else, and so that's what that would look like with two significant digits. So that is how you round numbers off to two significant digits. Now the rule is not that you always use two, but when you do want uh, you know, use different numbers each time, but that example I just wanted to show you how to do two with all of them.